Many parents talk about the fact that their children seem to be overly sensitive to sensory information. That is, they overreact to light, to sound, to touch, in some cases to movement. Some children smell things too much. And all of this can come under a, t a heading of, uh, known as sensory hypersensitivity. Um, one of the subheadings is tactile defensiveness, children who react very strongly when touched, especially when touched unexpectedly. Now, Larry, you know, we work hard to give hugs and all that stuff, but it was like this just irked him. And it was hard for me as a parent to ex accept that um, I couldn't hug him the same way. It I couldn't feels show. It like rejection. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a good My daughter's very sensitive with smell. It used to drive us crazy because when she was real little, she'd go up and smell people. Yeah. <laughs> and, smell, and she'd smell everything before she ate it. And it transferred to clothing, too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you didn't just take something out of the package. You had to wash it a few times. With my youngest, buy him new clothes, he refuses to wear them. I could buy him new oh. old clothes, mm -hmm. and he still doesn't want it. Put a hand in. Put an arm in your shirt. He wants clothes that he has worn, that he knows how that piece of clothing is going to wear on him, where it's going to touch him, how it's going to react if he turns his head or his arms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Shall we turn him inside out? Hmm? Shall we turn him around so they don't bug you? My child is sensitive to the seams and clothes, underwear, socks, and so on. And for a period of time, when you turn the socks inside out and turn the underwear inside out, that's okay because they think she dressed herself. And, you know, <laughs> so she got them inside out. But now she's eight, and it's not okay. And people are saying, oh, no, no, you've got it wrong. You have to turn them this way. And they don't understand that the seams are so irritating to her that she can't stand it. Do it again. You're doing a good job. Okay. Feels nice. Do you think we should keep using this washcloth? Yeah. Things that are soft really yeah. work well. I know even uh, we live in a northern state, and when I'm shopping for caps, ski caps and stuff, I always check to see if it's soft or scratchy. Um, uh, jogging outfits are wonderful. Um, there aren't a lot of seams, and it's loose enough that the seams don't chafe yeah. them. My youngest, he likes things that are noisy because he has some vision impairment. But he doesn't like loud sounds. He doesn't like unexpected sounds. at a different time. Yes. When Terry Ann was little, we lived next to a, a loud siren, you know, that went off the noon whistle. Yes, oh, the yeah. noon whistle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. And I made a mistake of, of, of having her outside one day, and the noon whistle went off, and I was busy making lunch. And we had a little split in the underneath the porch. And I come out, and all I seen was diapers. I mean, she had just dro dove right in there and was stuck because she was so overwhelmed by that hearing. We told our daughters that the whistle means, have you eaten lunch yet? It goes off at 12.30. <laughs> so now it's like, as soon as you hear the whistle, you turn around and say, did you eat lunch yet? Did you eat lunch yet? <laughs> <laughs> to help children cope with sensory integration problems, you might also try providing sunglasses to reduce glare from sun, snow, or even classroom lighting. They are also helpful in the dentist chair. Avoid crowded spaces where your child may be accidentally jostled or pushed. Create a cuddly space or hideout for your child to retreat to when she needs calming.